So HIV was built by the part that they isolated. So they didn't do it as it should have been done, to isolate the virus and then cut it in little pieces to study the parts. They saw the parts, and with the parts, they built the virus. But there is no demonstration at all that those parts belong to HIV at all. Not even the reverse transcriptase, that they said reverse transcriptase is specific for retrovirus. They should know that reverse transcriptase is released by cells whenever cells are exposed to any kind of stress, of stressors. And those glycoproteins that are the effect of oxidative stress or the stress response are the basis for ELISA and the Western blood. Because with those, prote with those proteins, they build the test in the laboratory. And with the RNA and the DNA that they saw in the culture, they build the viral load test. And look that they even give some names to them that are very, that have apparently have a lot of meaning. ELISA or a screening test, Western blood or confirmatory test, meaning that that is the good one. And the viral load, when you listen the name viral load, you mean the, the weight of the virus, the weight in the virus. It's really the virus is there. They are counting the virus. So even the name is, is misleading. But they say to you, we have the virus because we did cloning. We cloned the virus. That's not true. They only have been able to clone fragments of DNA or RNA. To clone a chip, do you know what they did? To clone a chip in, in England, they used the whole genome from the chip. You cannot clone a chip using the fragment of DNA that is from the leg because you only are going to get legs. <laughs> so they have never cloned any HIV at all. They have been cloning fragments of the same thing. So it's, it's again the same cycle, science, science all over. Everything seems to look or to explain that what we have in all this HIV phenomenon, in those this response of the cells, and that they call HIV, which you just simply call HIV phenomenon, is that this is the result of oxidative stress. Why oxidative stress? Perhaps I didn't explain that very well. Because whenever the cells respond with proteins, with enzymes, with nucleic acids, this is, they oxidate. So the cells are oxidated. You release a lot of free radicals in these processes. So that's why as more stressors you are exposed, exposed, higher the oxidation state of your body. For many years, we were asking the mainstream researchers of AIDS to isolate HIV, to show all the photos of HIV, the real one, and to do the real procedure that was to be done, to follow the steps that they were the ones who decided the steps in Pasteur Institute in 1974. So we asked them, why don't you do that? So they did it. In February 1997, in the journal Virology, in the volume 230, there are published two important articles. One is run by a group of researchers in the United States, and the other one is run by a group of researchers in France and Germany. And they follow, follow it very well, all the steps to try to isolate HIV. And you know, you know what happened? At 1.16, where were supposed to be the retroviral particles, there were nothing. No viral particles were seen there. N only cellular debris resolved from cellular stress. And they were very confused, as they might. And they say that they, they, since the authors are part of the mainstream researches, they say that they, they were very sorry, because really HIV is very tricky. And it's always very difficult to isolate in the, in, the, in the same way. And they couldn't take the photo. Because they were supposed to isolate the particles, bring that to the microscope, electron microscope, and take the photo. I always say that they, I will, they will come next saying to us that the HIV is so tricky that doesn't want to be in photos. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is the, 
the virology, virology 1997, February, volume 230. One is in page 134, and the other one is in page 230. And it's beautiful because you can see there the photos, the photos that what they saw is just caca, nothing. 